देते हैं आई बाव टू ऑल द सीकर्स ऑफ ट्रूथ वेन वी आर सीकिंग द ट्रूथ वी हैव टू नो we have to be honest about it. because it is benevolent for us not for others we are seeking the truth for ourselves not for others the another thing we have to remember very humbly that truth is what it is we cannot change it we cannot organize it we cannot maneuver it it is what has been and will be and what is the truth the truth is that you are the spirit you are not this body you are not this mind you are not this ego and you are not this condition you are the spirit but so far you have been a human being but to be a human being itself is a very great thing is the greatest thing to be a human being. perhaps we have not realized the value of our life because we do not know what we are the way we waste our time waste our energy waste our attention on things which are senseless because we still have to understand the greatness of our being human beings are made with such care so beautifully such delicate working of the divine from amoeba to this stage passing through various stages such a beautiful thing has been created as a human being but first we must have this attention to ourselves that there must be something it cannot be a purposeless thing it cannot be something just a chance is a wrong idea to play with if the gravitational force of the earth or any one of the galaxies changes there will be disaster absolute disaster so many things in the cosmos if you study the coefficients that works out the different balancing and the different weights and the movements of the different bodies show us that there must be some purpose and they do not trouble us is all as if made for the stage for human beings that the human beings have to come on the stage and all the preparation is made for the great drama i think it's high time that great scientists should look at it and start wondering why is it the way it is made why we are so much looked after the whole cosmos seems to be within ourselves as if we have buttons which move the cosmos which control the cosmos everything is going on so smoothly otherwise except when we do not try to understand ourselves it has been said practically in all the scriptures that you have to seek yourself you have to find yourself though i think many of the scriptures have been little bit changed and have been used for certain purposes still they could not get over this point that you have to become the self you have to be born again but that is not an artificial thing we are human beings not artificially made 
we are made really by some sort of a living force from amoeba. We are not just made uh, with some sort of a thinking or a mental projection. It is not a mental projection by which we have been human beings. It is something spontaneously happening, a living force within us which has brought us to this thing with a purpose, with a meaning. And now, at this stage, we are free to do what we like. Many people ask me, what was the need to give this freedom to human beings? It was very necessary. If you have to have the ultimate freedom, you must know how to deal with it. You have to understand. Of course, human beings have to make mistakes to our each human. And we have to understand that this trial, error and trial and error business has made us understand. Also those who have not understood must understand that there must be a wiser, a surer way to achieve that goal of self-realization of self-knowledge. Self-knowledge we do not have, we must admit very humbly. We have had no system by which we could know ourselves. But think of a computer that is a human being is. As soon as you see me, you know I am there. You don't have to go for programming, you don't have to consult anything, you don't have to use any uh, kind of computer or some sort of a complicated machinery, automatically, spontaneously, in a split of a second, you know that I'm standing before you and talking. Such a computer we cannot create. But the Divine has created such a great computer and that is the human being. And this human being is the only one who is going to achieve that higher state which we call as the spiritual state of the self. Because in the science they deal with the tree, I should say the outside, but they cannot go into the roots. To go into the roots you have to become a subtler being. Unless and until you become a subtler being, you cannot go into your roots to find out what are your roots are. And that is what is Self-Realization. When you become subtler, then only you can go into your being and can find out what actually you are. Also, to look after a tree which has not known its roots is a very difficult thing. What happens is that when you do not know your roots and you start growing and growing and growing, you go very deep down into that where you find that you have lost your way. Actually, you are not going deeper, you are spreading outside more and more. And then once you start going to extremes because of your freedom, you lose your way. That's how today everybody is saying a shock is going to come. We are all going to face a shock. This is going to happen, that is going to happen. But actually it is absolutely in your hand because the whole of the cosmos is within you. The cosmos is working under your control, complete. It is absolutely looking after you. Every element is looking after you to preserve you, to guide you, to take you to the right thinking. But in your freedom, you have to achieve that. This is a very big condition and there, there we feel to understand. Even there are many who say there is nothing like divine and there is nothing like God. In Russia I've been and I've been to China and all the communist countries and they are in a way partially uh, justified because what they found, those people who talk of God, those who say that we believe in God and those who say that we believe in religion can be irreligious. Anybody who can call himself a Christian, Hindu, Muslim, take part to anything, is capable of anything. 
Whatever he wants to do, he can do. Nobody can say that he, because he was a Christian, he could not do it. So the whole concept of religion becomes a mental projection again, an artificial thing. But if a person is a self-realized person, he goes beyond, beyond temptation, beyond any kind of domination of any habit. He becomes a very strong person, very powerful person and extremely compassionate. His compassion is active. It's not a compassion that I have formed a charitable institution which lends money to people. It's not like that. The being itself emits compassion and this compassion acts acts and works out. For example, you become like a light, which gives light to people and to yourself. You know others and you know yourself. That is the light of the truth. And unless and until that happens, one should not say that I am a self-realized soul or I am a twice-born. Is artificial. So what you have to understand that we are living in a relative world we talk relatively. We have to be in the absolute world, where the truth is absolute. Where now, before you I'm standing, you know very well that I'm wearing a sari, which is white. But it's a relative still, because somebody will say, oh, maybe it's white, somebody will say it's off-white, somebody will say like that. Still you know something. But to know it absolutely, meticulously, the right thing, you have to be the Spirit. But what you know is much more than these eyes can see or this nose can smell, is much more, much more explicit, much more clear-cut, like a person who is suffering, say, from some disease. A child is suffering from some disease and they don't know what the disease is. So they have to go through many various kinds of tests and for that if the gentleman, the father or the mother, they have to pay a lot of money. They go on finding about the child, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. They cannot find it, what's wrong with the child. And they are so upset about it. And within three days the child dies and still the diagnosis has not come. Is a very common thing. But when you are a self-realized soul, you can know what's wrong with the child. Exactly, you can put down your finger on the problem that he has. Now, how does it happen? He has already told you about the chakras that we have, the centers we have. These are the centers which on one side control the cosmos on the other side control us, give knowledge, and on the other side they give us the knowledge about others. These centers are within us. Now when I am telling you all this, you have to have an open mind of a scientist. You shouldn't just deny it, because in your concept it doesn't fit it. But like a scientist, please see to it that if it is proved, you have to accept that this is so. Now these chakras are within you, these centers are within you, and these centers communicate to you through your fingertips what's the matter with the child. You can feel it on your fingertips. Now five, six and seven centers, right side, seven centers. The right side has got these seven centers if they are decoded it properly and if you know what is the decoding is. Putting the hand towards the child for a realized soul, it is very easy to see where is the problem. And as soon as he finds the problem and he knows how to cure it, he can cure people without going to doctors. Sir, yoga has cured, I must say. I don't want to claim it because I don't want to open a hospital. We are here to create doctors and not patients. So even some patients who have come to us have become doctors in a way that they diagnose it on their fingertips 
As Muhammad Sahib has clearly said that at the time of your resurrection, your hands will speak. But still, nobody wants to know about it. That's called as the resurrection time as Kayama. Nobody wants to talk about it. Your hands will speak and will give evidence and witness against you. Clearly he has said it, I must say he's done such a lot of work on the self-knowledge as Christ has also said so many things. But people don't want to look at that side like to say that we must suffer itself. It's a nonsense, I think. How can any God who is a compassionate father would like his children to suffer to meet him? I mean, it doesn't go into logic at all. But people accept this funny concept of sufferings. What about Christ? He suffered for us, isn't he? Isn't it that he suffered for us? If so, is, has he left something for us to be done, to be completed more than he has suffered? He has suffered for us and he has done the job fully. We don't have to do any more about it. He carried the cross. People make him look like a TB patient, even worse than that, just bones and the skin. It's very surprising. How can you conceive Christ like that? Any one of the people who say they are very healthy people, let them carry the cross and we'll see. It is so contradictory about Christ that surprisingly that he should say that you have to suffer. Same about Jews. I just don't understand why should they say that you have to suffer if their God is kind. Same about all other organized or disorganized or perverted people who say that you have to suffer. Suddenly people become vegetarians. Suddenly they become fasting in India, though we have to fast in any case because of lack of food, but they have fasting days. There are some people who fast at least five days in a week, the fasting. What is the need to fast? If you ask for fasting, you'll have to fast all your life. That's what God gives you, you fast now. You want to fast? All right, have it fasting. We are asking for trouble. You want to be miserable? All right, be miserable. You want to be unhappy? All right, be unhappy. You find people coming out of congregations which are supposed to be very religious, so miserable looking. How can it be? It has to be joy. It has to be happiness. Just think of it. How can we ever believe such things? But we have believed for ages, 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 and it cannot go out of our heads that we have to suffer. How long? How many years? How many lives? Nothing is written anywhere. You better go on suffering and make others suffer also with it. If some person is like that in your family, you would like to run away with that boredom because he's suffering for nothing at all. You don't understand why he's suffering. So you want to run away from such a person. And all this kind of idea we have accepted for ages now. And that has led us to a big confusion about God. Then we take to things which give us joy. Actually, they are not. They are just flippant pleasures. We cannot enjoy anything in life. Really, we cannot. You can see the way people are now going on for such sensational things. The reason is there's no joy. The sensitivity to joy is so reduced that I sometimes fear with all that they are doing, so, so fed up that they may have, have to put electrodes in their limbic area to get the joy instead. They have become so very, so very insensitive to anything. They are not in love, they will not smile, they are so full of 
uh, close hearts and frightening things, whatever is said about human beings. Now, first thing you have to know, you don't have to suffer at all. Secondly, you don't have to judge yourself. Let your Kundalini rise and judge. You don't start judging yourself and condemning yourself. And the another fashion which is very common is to feel guilty. From the very beginning you start, I am afraid. What are you afraid of? You have to have all the courage, all the blessings and all the confidence. You are a human being and this is the message I want to tell you that you are a human being and you have to be the Spirit. And once you are the Spirit, you will be surprised, the blessings will be showering upon you. In these modern times to talk about these things is out of date, but it is predicted that this will be said and this will be done. For us it is important, first of all, to know our own glory, our own truths and about how we are built and how others are built. Once you know that, first of all, the peace within is established. Unless and until there is peace within, what do you talk of this peace organization and peace Nobel Prize? I have seen the people who have got Nobel Prizes are the most uh, hot-headed, so much that you have to talk to them with a barge pole in between. Any time they have up to jump on you. So you cannot challenge them. Even talking to them is a difficult situation. So how are they going to have this peace foundation when they are themselves so shaky? Then you have other things talking about the love, the love, full of lust and greed. They love your purse, not you. When you talk of love, love is a thing that's detached. Like the sap in the tree rises, goes to all the leaves, all the trunk, all the flowers, all the fruits and comes back. It's not attached. If it gets attached to one fruit, the tree will die and the fruit will die too. So this pure love or the divine love is detached. That's why it acts. It works. A person who is a realized soul is such a pure personality that even a glance of such a person can do lots of things. Even a thought of such a person in the attention can do so many things, bring about so many changes. So this is the time of our transformation. We have to become a higher personality, the transformation has to take place. In, at the time of Easter we give people eggs. Perhaps people do not know why do we give them eggs at the time of Easter. But about Christ is written in our scriptures that He was an egg to begin with. Of course He was much more before that, but to begin with He was the uh, God of innocence. But then He came as a an egg. And then he was divided into two halves. The one half which incarnated and which transformed his life. So the resurrection is the transformation. Like an egg, if we are bound by our conditioning and by our ego, we break through that shell and become a bird which is really a free bird. Only thing the bird has to know how to fly. Now this is again I am saying is the living process of the living nature, of the living power of love. It is not something artificial. In Sahaja Yoga, I must have spoken in this hall, I don't know how many times before, and again today there is a chance to speak to you. What I have to say that it is important the becoming is not important. You cannot become a member of Sahaja Yoga. You cannot pay membership. You cannot pay for your realization. How can you pay? 
how much do we pay to the mother earth to spout the seed? Does she understand? Because she has the power, she sprouts the seed. If you give her money or read something before her, it makes no difference. But once you get your realization, you start understanding how many powers you have. And the greatest power is of compassion and detached love. These seven chakras are within us, which are to be enlightened by the awakening of the Kundalini about which Dr. Spiro has already told you. Now, in this short time, I cannot cover up the whole subject. I must have given at least more than thousand lectures in English language. But I would request you one thing, that forget about what you have learned so far, about your conditionings, because if you had achieved anything out of that, I was not necessary. Now, you have to see with a clean slate, as they say, what you can achieve in this lifetime, which is the most important thing is to be achieved. Of course, there's a lot of things that should really make you more tempting about it. Firstly, that you get rid of all your illnesses. Most of the illnesses can be cured if they are at an early stage by Sahaja Yoga. Uh, most of the mental illnesses can be cured with Sahaja Yoga. Your material problems can be solved by Sahaja Yoga. Your spiritual problems like going, going to wrong gurus and wrong people, whatever you have accumulated within you can be corrected. But the highest of all that you become sensitive to joy, then you start seeing joy in everything. You don't have to think as, oh, this is the thing which is marvelous. No, it just happens. You see, it is. Just you enjoy without thinking about it. You become a peaceful personality. You be become a dynamic personality. You are not swayed by uh, the waves of things like some fashion coming up, then some sort of a nonsensical idea coming up, then some medicine coming up, and you treating yourself and getting into trouble. You just rise above all these things at a higher level and you start seeing everything as a witness. You become the witness of all the jokes that are going on and you just watch it and you think, what's all this is just a play. Many people have said that, Mother, you always laugh so much and you have always smiling face, so the people are not going to take you seriously. I said, I don't want them to be serious. There's not going to be any seriousness needed. What are you serious about? You should be happy, it's fun. We have to be happy people. We have to be happy. Most people who think they are very guilty should punish themselves by saying, you are not guilty, you are not guilty. 108 times. That's what we have in surgery. It's just a myth. All these are myths. We are working with myths and making our lives miserable, which is meant to be joy, happiness, and all the overflowing blessings of the Divine. Whatever I'm telling you about, we have within ourselves all the great powers hidden of our brain, of our liver, of our heart they are to be enlightened. And then in the light you see everything. But as in this room you have so many lights, you have to just push in one button and the whole thing comes down. In the same way it happens. But if I start telling you about the history of electricity in the dark and all about how it came here and what all happened, you would be just fed up with it. So what we are doing is to tell you that let us put on the button first you better have your light and see in that light if it is true or not. If it is true, you have to understand and accept it honestly. You have to be honest to yourself, that is the main point I am trying to tell you. We are not to play about with ourselves and play about with our conditions. We have to be honest and to get to our properties that are within ourselves. I am not here to oblige you at all, there is no obligation. It's just like a catalyst, I would say. 
and you become the catalyst yourself once you get your realization. And you can do all that I can do. It's very easy and very simple. May God bless you all. Now, should we have questions or what? I would only request, don't be aggressive with me, there's no need. I've not come here for votes, nor for any money, nor for anything. I've just come here to give you your own keys, out of love that I am. So please try to understand me. I'm not here to take away anything from you just to show you what you are and we'll be happy to know that you are something great. May God bless you. I would like you to ask me questions related to Self-Realization and not to waste the time of so many who look so anxious to have their Self-Realization. Those who do not want to do any meditation after this, it will take hardly ten minutes for you to get your Realization because the journey is three to four feet only, from here to here, that's all. <laughs> so, I would just say that you will all get your Realization in no time, should get your Realization, but do not try to be uncivil. If you do not want to have it, you should leave the hall and leave others in peace, that would be very kind of you. And not to see and watch we don't need, need such people here. Those who want to have Realization can sit down or others have freedom to go but not freedom to sit here. So I would request you to be kind and civil to others who want to receive their Realization. Any questions, please? Sir? Dr. could you please, please talk about how the generating principle works. Could you say something to finish off what he said? Generating principle? <laughs> Germinating. <laughs> you see, it is, I would say, it is spontaneous. Now that should explain a little bit. How does a seed germinate? You have the seed and you put it in the Mother Earth, all right, and it germinates because it is all built in it. This is all built in it, all this is built in it. And in the triangular bone you have got this Kundalini which is placed within you in three and a half coils of an energy which is a residual energy, which is actually the power of your pure desire. Because the desire that we have otherwise, all the desires are not pure, that's why they are not satiable in general. We get one thing, we want to have another. We get the another thing, we want to have the third thing. So this is the power of pure desire. And this pure desire is described in the Bible as Holy Ghost, in the Qur'an as Asas, and in the Indian 
scriptures as Adi Shakti, as the primordial mother. So, she is the power of God as called as the primordial mother. Now, this primordial mother is settled in our triangular bone, while the spirit, which is the reflection of God Almighty, is in our heart. But the seat of the heart is on top of your head, here, on the fontanel bone area, which is called as Brahmarandra in Sanskrit language. And also when we talk of baptism, we try to bless there, but it's artificial. Real baptism is when this Kundalini, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Adi Shakti, the reflection of that, rises within you, piercing through these centers, piercing through the fontanel bone area, and actualizes the experience of this personal experience and gives you a cool breeze coming out of your head. Actually, the cool breeze coming out of your head, you feel it. And then you feel it everywhere, the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. And that is the subtle of the subtlest, which is the synthesis of all the powers, which works everything out. Like you can say in the sulfur dioxide, uh, we have in the molecule of a sulfur dioxide, we find that there is pulsation of the vibrations. Who does that? We say electromagnetic, but the electromagnetic is one part of the same power. So this power we can broadly divide into three things. In the first power, what we call as the power by which we desire, the second power by which we act, and the third power by which we ascend. All the synthesis of all these powers, all these powers are in this Kundalini, which meets the spirit, because the seat of the spirit, as they call the pitha, is on top of your head, and that's how the whole attention, you can see like a sari, is supposing the attention is spread here, and the Kundalini rises, rises like that, pierces through this head, and the whole of this attention becomes enlightened. That's how your attention becomes enlightened. This is in short, I'm telling you. But as I told you, we have got my lectures on all detailed way, how it works out, it's quite a detailed thing. But in the first lecture it would be quite boring for you. So I think I better tell you this much, that it's a spontaneous happening and can happen to all of you. No, it is, you see, we do not understand the meaning of meditation actually. You are not to meditate, but you are in meditation in search of God. You become meditative by temperament. Now, I would suggest like this, that in the beginning, why I said you have to meditate? Because I would like to tell you, actually that word is not so suitable, but I said that you have to little bit cooperate with me, how to, uh, how to help your Kundalini to rise. That's the process we are going to have in a, a uh, very simple verse. But I said meditate because that's all, to make it a smaller way of saying things. But actually in Sahaja Yoga, you, the practice of Sahaja Yoga is very different from any kind of meditation, of concentration or anything. There are very simple ways by which you have to correct your left or right side and to be in the center. And then when you are in the center, the growth takes place. It's very simple and luckily we are going to have next Thursday a very good workshop where they will tell you all the details how it is to be done. And they'll solve all your questions and all your problems there. And lots of people are going to be uh, in that place where 
we will find solutions to all these questions you are asking. Thursday they are going to have a very good workshop. Yes, sickness can be cured if you become self-reliant. Actually, you don't go to doctors then anymore. You become a doctor yourself. So the physical sufferings can be lessened. Now the collective suffering comes by the stupidity of human beings, by the ego of human beings, of wrong ideas, you see, like a Hindu fighting a Sikh and a Muslim fighting a uh, Muslim and a Christians fighting the Jews or all those sorts of nonsense and also the capitalists fighting the communists. Actually, I should say I'm, the, I'm a capitalist because I have certain powers and I'm the greatest communist because I must distribute it. This is a real power which has to be distributed. What is the money power to be distributed? Useless thing. Money doesn't give you any sense. So it's the combination of everything, the synthesis of everything you find and that's how you are surprised that the sufferings just disappear. Also now uh, you might say that what about the uh, sufferings of the nature? People who are realized souls never get those sufferings either because, you see, this whole cosmos is within them, they are looked after. This is that a human awareness, but at the spiritual awareness you become beyond suffering. And Christ is to be awakened within you, that's the point. Because Christ is not awakened within you, when the Christ, you know, in these chakras, this center is Agya chakra, here is stored the deity of Christ. Now here, if you can see in the map, there is, they have shown on one side the ego, and on the other side the superego, means the condition. Now when this chakra, is awakened, in the mean, meaning the Christ within us is awakened, then He sucks in our karmas. That's why we say that He died for our sins. Then He also sucks in our conditioning, both the things. He is placed in the middle of the brain, you can say, where is the optic child by crossing. And he, he, he looks after the pituitary and the pineal body. That's how he controls both the things within us. And he sucks in. And when he sucks in, there's an opening that takes place on our fontanel bone area. And th through that, then the Kundalini pierces. How can you keep your self-realization if you are not in touch with the collective? You cannot. You have to keep some connection with the collective. It's like, say, nowadays it's autumn, you have seen. In autumn what happens? A bark, like a cork, develops between the leaves and the tree, and such a leaf falls off and dies. You have to be in the collective. You cannot keep your self-realization without collectivity. It's very important to be with the collective. This is one point people fail, because they think they lose their individuality. It's a wrong idea. Actually, when the leaf dies, it has no individuality. On the contrary, when it is on the tree, you'll be surprised that one leaf cannot tally with another leaf in the whole world. Such an individual thing it is. It is, I would say, unity in diversity, complete unity in diversity, because 
That is, the variety is the one that gives beauty to this world. Otherwise, if we are all sort of dressed up the same way, walking the same way, it will be such a boring company. Is there any question? Such a report. It's beautiful people today. All right. So now, as I have requested you, those who would like to go should go. Because when we do this, we all have to close the eyes. And people are not even willing to do that. So the thing is, the Divine is not going to fall at our feet, isn't it? We have to be little humble about it. If we don't have that humility, it's better we should try other methods and then come to Sahaja Yoga. Because Sahaja Yoga is not meant for arrogant people, for people who think no end of themselves. It's meant for people who want to get their self realization. Now, a simple thing we have to do, all of us which is also sometimes not liked by people when I tell them, we have to take out our shoes because this Mother Earth is going to help us a lot. She is the one who is giver of everything, so we have to take out our shoes and touch the Mother Earth. You can keep your socks on with your both the feet. Put both the feet separately, because there are two powers, separately on the Mother. Those who are sitting on the ground are all right as they are, they need not uh, put the feet like this, they can sit in a sahajasana, means in a way that is relaxed, not to put legs on, on top of another or anything, any stress on your body is not needed. You have to be comfortable, to be straight, sitting straight, not putting your neck back or forward, just sitting straight, that's all. One promise has to be there in your heart that you will, after Realization, respect your Realization and grow like a tree and should not be the, like the parable of the seeds that some seeds fell on the rock and some who sprouted also got lost. I would request you very, very earnestly and with a great concern that you have to look after your Self-realization and your growth. As we do not take any money from anyone, we don't have very elaborate places or elaborate centers. So whatever is available is there for you, but that is God's place and you have to come there to get all the information, the knowledge about the Self. I hope you will not treat it with just a side issue, but the main object of your human ascent. You don't have to pay for it, you don't have to do anything like that. Moreover, we are all the time trying to save time and that is why the time has to be spent, is being collective and enjoying the joy. May God bless you all. So both hands have to be like this to begin with. This is because, as I told you, these are all sympathetic centers which are to be enlightened, first of all, 
So the information goes to the Kundalini that the Kundalini needs to be awakened. This is first thing we have to do. Now, secondly, we have to facilitate the movement of the Kundalini even if she is awakened. And for that I will tell you how to put your hand into various centers, to the various centers, so that you can yourself facilitate. I would like one of you to get up and show it. Yeah. Now, Dr. Spiro will show you also and I will also that first you have to put your hand to your heart. Where is your size? Now left hand towards me and right hand on the heart, left hand towards me. Now, to your heart and here recites the Spirit. We work only on the left hand side because that is the pride of our desire and put the left hand like this symbolically meaning uh, uh, that this is the power of desire and we want to have our self like expression of that. Now the second Chakra is on the upper part of your abdomen, on the left hand side. This is the center of your mastery, by which the mastery over this power of love or divine vibrations you achieve and manifest through your being. It just starts working like through our eyes we can see the light. In the same way, once you become the master, you, be, you can feel, you can know everything about yourself and about others. Then you have to take down the right hand to the lower part of your abdomen. This is the one which is working out our pure knowledge. knowledge which is absolute and pure. This center is very important and by some unauthorized people, if some people have tampered it, we have to nourish it by putting our right hand towards it. Then again we go back into the upper part of the abdomen. Then we go back to our heart. Now here we go back to the left hand side of our neck, here, like this, from front. Many people try this side, no, you have to try from front and then turn your head to your right, like this. Now this center catches when we feel it and now I find quite a lot catching in this audience, so please for the sake of your Self-realization, forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself. Now, please now stretch your hand like this and put it on top of your forehead. This is the center of forgiveness here and press it on both the sides like this. Now you have to take this hand on the back, rest your head on that put the head up and then you have to take out your hand again and stretch it like this, fully stretched. The center of your palm is to be placed on top of the frontal bone area. You might bend your head a little, it would be better. Just there, which was a soft bone in your child and you have to press your scalp and move it about seven times slowly in a clockwise manner. That's all we have to do. But we must press it hard and the fingers must be pushed back nicely so that we can spread our palm nicely. All right, that's all is to be done. Very simple. <coughs> now we have to close our eyes. Please don't open your eyes till I tell you, because the attention 
will be attracted inside. And please, you can take out your glasses. The other day, one lady uh, was quite blind, I think, and she started seeing. It was, um, you know, things happen like that. So I would request you to take out your glasses. It helps you. And please keep your eyes shut till I tell you, please don't open your eyes. This is how you are going to help yourself and also you will know how to all the time raise your Kundalini. It's a very simple method which I'm telling you. Now, please put your left hand towards your neck and right hand on your head. Left hand towards me and right hand on your heart. Here, now close your eyes. In the heart resides the spirit. So please ask me a question within yourself, a very fundamental question. You can call me Sri Mataji or Mother, whatever you like. Mother, am I the spirit? Ask this question. Mother, am I the spirit? Is a very fundamental question here. Ask this question three times. If you are the Spirit, you are also your guide and master. So please put your right hand in the upper part of your abdomen, on the left hand side, on your stomach, on the left hand side, and press it hard and ask the question here three times again. Mother, am I my own master? Mother, am I my own master? Mother, am I my own master? Ask this question in your heart. Now, we move our right hand, move it down into the lower part of our abdomen on the left hand side. Now here, please keep your eyes shut, please keep your eyes shut and don't move too much. Here you have to know that I respect your freedom and I cannot force you to have the pure knowledge. You have to say that you want it. So here you please say, Mother, please Give me pure knowledge six times because this center has got six petals. So please say six times, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. With this asking, the Kundalini starts rising because she knows you want it. Now to facilitate her movement, we go back to the higher chakra and take our hand to the upper part of the abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard. Now, with full confidence, we have to say ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Say it with full confidence. So the Kundalini will rise. Mother, I am my own master. Please say it ten times. You still correct your spiritual domination if somebody has dominated you spiritually, in the sense that they have misguided you spiritually. I am my own master. Now, raise your right hand to the heart. Here resides the Spirit. So with 
full confidence say 12 times mother i am the spirit have confidence in yourself we have to know that the divine is the ocean of love and compassion but above all it is the ocean of forgiveness and we cannot commit any mistake which the divine cannot forgive so please forgive yourself forgive yourself fully and raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to the right and here with full confidence you say 16 times mother i am not guilty at all please say very important and as i said if you still feel guilty you can punish yourself by saying it hundred and eight times you have to be presently praised towards yourself because you are going to enter into the kingdom of god you have to love yourself and respect yourself 16 times we say now raise your hand uh, and put it on your forehead across put it on your forehead across <coughs> this is the center of forgiveness so please here you have to say mother i forgive everyone <coughs> from your heart you might say it is difficult but it is a myth whether you forgive or you do not forgive you do not do anything but if you do not forgive then you play into wrong hand so to get over all the loads you just say from your heart mother i forgive everyone it's not important how many times press it on both the sides now take back your hand and put your hand on the back of your head and place your hand a head on that move your head upward now here for your own satisfaction only without counting any mistakes or guilt you can say o oh divine if i have made any mistakes please forgive me for your own satisfaction don't feel guilty about it. in a very pleasant manner now stretch your hand fully push back your fingers and put the center of your palm on top of the fontanel bone area and now start moving it very slowly very slowly clockwise the scalp press it hard push back your fingers seven times at this point i must say that i cannot force again the self realization upon you i respect your freedom you have to ask for it so please say seven times mother please give me my realization give me my self realization or may i have my self realization
take down your head. Please open your eyes very slowly. Now watch me without thinking. Let's see if you can do it without thinking. Just watch me without thinking. Please put your right hand towards me, right hand towards me like this. And the left hand above your head and bend your head and try to see if you are feeling any cool breeze from here. Bend your head, bend, bend it. little higher. Some people get it very high, very high they get it, some of them. Move it, hand. Now put the left hand towards Me, like this. Again bend your head and see if you are getting a cool breeze in your head. Now put your right hand towards Me. Again, bend your head and see for yourself again if there is a cool breeze. Oh. Now raise both your hands towards the sky and push back your head and ask a question three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the Brahma Shakti? Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Just ask the question. Now put down your hand. Now please put your hands like this. You feel very relaxed and peaceful. In the hands also you'll feel a little cool breeze coming. Some people might feel in one hand, might feel in another hand. Some of them do feel that way. All those who are feeling the cool breeze on top of their heads or on their fingertips, please raise both your hands, both hands to be raised, those who are feeling it. Just see what Most of them have felt it. Imagine, hardly very few haven't felt. It's very easy for them also to feel it and if they want they can come up to the stage and people can look after them. They can feel it today, they should, and they will work out their Kundalini. Maybe little help is needed and it's very kind of you, all of you, to have received your Realization. I bow to all of you. I bow to all of you and I beg of you as a mother that please look after your Self-Realization. Do not waste it. Those who haven't got it should not feel in any way uh, disturbed or upset. It's very simple, maybe uh, the little time was needed more or whatever it is. I would request them to come on the stage for five minutes or ten minutes and they might get their Realization very well. May God bless. Also, if you want to come and meet Me, you can come on the stage. Uh, I would like to talk to you. Uh, so many. Now what do you want? The England, the whole England. Those who want to be, should come. 
one by one, please. 